Hi, I'm Gwendolyn with iFixit, and today we're tearing down the oh the Oculus Rift. The first consumer version of the Oculus Rift is finally here. After tearing down two previous development units, we can't wait to see what's been changed. Of course, the hardest part of any Oculus Rift teardown is getting it away from all of our coworkers who've been dying to try it out. Before we handed over our Oculus to our teardown engineers, we decided to try to get a look at one of the coolest features of the Rift that also happens to be invisible. Using our infrared camera, we're able to see all the IR lights in the front of the device. These tiny LEDs are what make the Oculus's head tracking work as well as it does. And in this newest version of the headset, there's more on the back of your head, making spinning in circles in a virtual landscape a reality. After the release of a few clips, the front plate was free. This plate is covered in stretchy black lycra fabric that allows the adjustable lenses freedom to move. And speaking of those lenses, look at them go. The development kit 2 of the Oculus Rift used a single 1080p display, the same one found in the Galaxy Note 3 as a matter of fact, but the CV1 has opted for two displays mounted right on the lenses. Removing the cowl reveals the meat of the Oculus, including the motherboard that is home to a 4K HDMI to MIP dual DSi converter, a proprietary 2.4 GHz Nordic Semiconductor system on chip, and 64 megabytes of serial flash memory. For the complete list of chips we've identified, check out the teardown at ifixit.com. Separating the weird looking lenses reveals the displays. These OLEDs measure in at 90 millimeters for a resulting pixel density of 456 pixels per inch, which means the average user would have to be eight inches away from the displays for the pixels to become indistinguishable. Since these are mere inches away from your eyes during use, how does the Rift deal with it? It's all in those weird lenses. Where prior Oculus Rift kits came with interchangeable circular lenses, the CV1 uses a single set of non-removable asymmetric lenses, also known as a Fresnel lens. The Fresnel lens has the same large viewing angle and short focal length in a fraction of the weight, which is exactly what virtual reality needs. But it looks like Oculus took it a step further and manufactured hybrid Fresnel lenses. These lenses are made up of concentric prisms like any other Fresnel lens, but an extra sloping layer is added to the back of the lens, creating a shape that mimics a traditional curved lens and allowing the focus to vary along the vertical axis of the lens. That's why the Rift instructs you to focus the headset by simply pushing it higher or lower on your face. We had to test these lenses out. So with the help of our spooky Halloween bubbler and green laser, we got to see how the Rift's lenses make up for your eyes and the display shortcomings by making you think you're looking at an endless and distant display. For the virtual reality experience to be realistic and not be uncomfortable, you need the optics to do two things. Magnify the display so that you can't see the edges and focus the display at optical infinity. These lenses do just that. We've come to the end of our teardown and now we turn our thoughts towards repairability. How did the Oculus Rift CV1 score? It got a seven out of 10 and here's why. On the upside, cable management is much improved from the development kits with a sturdy connector for easy removal. The earpiece speakers are super easily removed thanks to spring connectors. And the face pad is held in with plastic clips and pulls out easily. But on the downside, replacing the head strap is impossible without cutting through the fabric on the headset. And finally, intricate design and delicate ribbon cables make it very difficult to remove the lenses, displays, and the motherboard. And that's our teardown. For the complete teardown, including tons of beautiful, high quality images, head on over to ifixit.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all our latest teardowns and repair videos. You can follow us on Twitter at ifixit and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash ifixit.